Hey everyone, Steve Perry here. This video accompanies Unit 3 of the Node.js course available from IBM Code. In this video, I'll give you a tour of Node.js. First, we'll look at the Node.js architecture. Then we'll take a quick look at the ECMAScript standard. Then I'll give you a tour of the read eval print loop or REPL. And we'll take a quick look at NPM, Node's package ecosystem. Links to everything you see in the video are available in the video description. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. From the Node.js.org website, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Okay, but what does that mean? Hmm, I think I need a picture. I'll search the web. As you can see, there are approximately 178 billion different images showing the Node architecture. Challenge accepted. So I came up with this. At the top of the stack is your application, along with contributions from the Node community through NPM. We'll talk about NPM later in the video. Then there's the Node runtime, comprised of several components like the JavaScript engine, which is the Chrome V8 engine. V8 is Google's JavaScript engine. It's written in C++, it's open source, and designed to be embedded into C++ applications like web browsers. Ryan Dahl, the creator of Node.js, had this bright idea. If V8 can be embedded in a web browser, why not a standalone program? And Node.js was born. I'm skipping around a little, but that's the gist. Anyway, all of the JavaScript in your Node applications runs in V8 on a single thread. Node embeds the V8 engine in its core, which we'll talk about in a minute. So how does Node achieve any kind of reasonable scalability when JavaScript code can only run in one thread? Answer, the other infrastructure component, the event loop, which is implemented by LiveUV. LiveUV is a multi-platform library that implements the event loop and does asynchronous I.O. through the use of callbacks. This model of I.O. is called non-blocking and is the key to Node's scalability. Next is the Node core, which sits between V8, LiveUV, and the Node API, which you use in your applications. The Node API includes lots of built-in code for your applications to use. Finally, there's userland, where your applications live. Userland is a term that pretty much describes any code that's not part of the Node runtime, but might be part of a Node application. This includes your application, of course, and any packages you include from the NPM registry, which we'll talk about shortly. The European Computer Manufacturers Association is a standards body. Among their many responsibilities is the maintenance of the ECMA script standard, or ECMAScript. The official designation of ECMAScript is ECMA-262. JavaScript is the most popular implementation of ECMAScript. There are several editions or versions of the ECMAScript standard. Their names are derived from the date the spec was released, sometimes, and the version of the spec, sometimes. It can be confusing, so just remember this, ECMAScript is shortened to ES. ECMAScript 2015 was released in 2015 and is called ES2015. ES2015 is also the sixth edition of the ECMAScript standard and is sometimes called ES6. ES2016, released in 2016, is ES7 because it's the seventh edition. ES2017 is ES8 and so on. The important point is this. Node currently supports ES6 and is always marching towards the latest ECMA 262 standard. If you want to see an up-to-date status of JavaScript features supported by Node version and ECMAScript version, check out node.green. Links to everything in this section are in the video description, so make sure and check those out. The Node read eval print loop provides a terminal-based interactive environment that lets you play around with Node applications. It's good for learning and prototyping, and I'll give you a tour of it now. Open a terminal window or command prompt and type Node and press Enter. You'll see the Node prompt, which is a greater than sign. Now you can enter JavaScript code one line at a time. And there you have it. Hey, wait a minute. That's not very interesting at all. Let me try this again. So what all can the REPL do? Enter the .help command to see. There are a number of built-in commands with REPL like .editor to enter a multi-line editor, control C to exit, and .exit to get out. Isn't it nice to have an easy way to exit a program? I'm talking to you, Emacs. Enter a line of JavaScript 
and it evaluates it after you type enter. Statements evaluate to undefined, of course. Expressions are echoed like you see here, hello space world. To enter the multi-line editor, enter the dot editor command. Then type in the JavaScript. To evaluate it, type control D. Multi-line statements work in the REPL too. When the REPL encounters an unmatched left brace, it indicates continuation with an ellipsis. When you type the matching right brace, the ellipsis disappears and the multi-line statement is run and the message expression here is evaluated. Let's add another line of code and message is evaluated again. You can also load JavaScript from a file into the REPL to execute it. I'll assume you've cloned the code for the course as I showed you in Unit 2. I'll exit the REPL, navigate to the location where I cloned the source, and restart the REPL. Now I'll load example2.js code and it runs automatically. As you can see, the REPL is a handy tool to use. To learn more about it, visit the Node API docs and click on REPL. The more you use Node, the more you'll come to rely on NPM and the NPM registry. You can access the NPM website at www.npmjs.com. NPM bills itself as the package manager for JavaScript and the world's largest software registry. NPM consists of three components. The NPM website that you just saw, which contains lots of great documentation. There's the NPM command line interface, or CLI, that you installed in Unit 2, and which you'll use to install packages from the NPM registry, which is a public repository of JavaScript code, which contains hundreds of thousands of packages for everything imaginable. Nonsense, anyone? I know, right? So many packages of nonsense. That URL again is www.npmjs.com. And I'll cover NPM in detail in Unit 7, so make sure and check that out. And there you have it. The Node.js architecture, the ECMAScript standard, the REPL, and NPM. Make sure to check out the Node.js course at IBM Code. A link to the course is in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Steve Perry. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So long.